Today we will go over bond energy and bond length that is very important not only for this chapter but also for chapters ahead uh, where you will be working with bond breakings and heat of formation and such. So uh, why does bond energy and bond length exist? Uh, if you see on the Lewis structure, uh, does it look like every bond has the same length? Well, it does look like it does look like it, but actually, no. Uh, each bond, is depending on the atoms and its surroundings, has its own bond length and bond energy. Uh, Lewis structure has a limit to completely visualize the atoms, and therefore, uh, we have to rely on the trend of bond energy and bond length rather than the Lewis structure to uh, know its exact bond energy and bond length. Uh, so, first, what is bond energy? Bond energy is the energy required to break one mole of the bond in the gas phase. Here, you need to pay attention to the one mole and gas phase. Uh, sometimes the teachers may trick you with a uh, solid phase or something. Uh, so, bond energy is like the energy required to break one... It's like the bond energy required to break one mole of gas H2 molecule to two different uh, hydrogen atoms. Uh, the bond energy is always positive no matter what because it always requires energy to break bond. Uh, bond. Bond breaking requires energy and therefore is endothermic process. Uh, generally, the st stronger the bond, uh, more stable the bond is, and which means it is less reactive. The trend of bond energy is that the greater difference in electronegativity between two atoms, uh, <clears throat> uh, stronger the bond energy of them. Uh, for example, the bond of CH, carbon and hydrogen, is almost 1.5 times greater than carbon and nitrogen because the difference in each of their electronegativity is greater for CH than CN. Uh, however, there are some exceptions to this and there are no specific rules that we can uh, use unless we go really into depth. Uh, so it's true for most cases, but not always true. Uh, there's one trend that is always true, uh, which is that the bond energy's relationship to the number of bonds is uh, proportional. Uh, I'm saying that if you are given the same bond, such as two carbons, the molecule with double bond will have stronger bond energy than the one with single bond, and the triple bond uh, will have stronger bond energy than the double bond. So greater number of uh, bond, stronger the bond energy. A uh, bond energy uh, bond energy between two same atoms and same number of uh, bond can also be different depending on what other atoms are forming bond around them, or like bond with one of the two atoms. Uh, I'll explain using these three equations. Uh, you're able to see that all of these three, three molecules have bond CH, uh, but the bond energy to break each of these bonds uh, are different. This is the result of other other atoms forming bond with carbon, which is fluorine, uh, bromine, and chlorine. Uh, because these halogen atoms form bond with carbons in different magnitude of strength and electronegativity, the bond energy of CH also differs. Uh, these are the average bond energies of some molecules, and you're able to observe that the trends described in previous slides adhere to most of this table. Mm -hmm. uh, bond length and bond energy is uh, inver inversely proportional, meaning uh, as bond energy gets greater, the bond length gets smaller, and vice versa. Uh, you can think of it as the strong stronger two atoms are pulling each other, the closer they pull each other. Uh, however, this is not true for all cases. Uh, each atoms have their own 
own individual atomic radius before forming before forming bond and this impacts the bond length as well for example although the cl2 has greater bond length than f2 uh, if we see the previous table cl2 has stronger bond energy than f2 uh, which does not follow uh, what we said in the third bullet point uh, and this is because of the bond this is because of the atomic radius of cl is much greater than uh, fluorine uh, make sure that there are some ex exceptions to the third trend that i have described uh, the bond length trend all follows the inverse of the trend of bond energy a uh, greater difference in electronegativity means shorter bond length. Uh, greater number of bonds means shorter bond length, and atoms forming bond can atoms forming bond outside the bond that we're trying to describe can impact the bond length uh, despite having the same two atoms. Uh, so it follows uh, every trend. That we have described in this slide but it's inversely proportional uh however these trends uh is also not always true uh it works for most of the time and but can have uh, exceptions and it will have greater exceptions than the bond energy trend uh because of the different atomic radius that uh each atom have well, this is the bond length, bond energy, and bond length uh, lecture, and I hope you understood well. Thank you.